Uh, then good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Geltenham Public Works Committee meeting. I'm going to turn this over to the Chair of Public Works, and that's Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Before you do, Mr. President, do we not need to have a disclaimer from our solicitor? Yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, did you meet an executive session? We had an executive session on personnel yes. matters. Personnel matter. A single personnel matter. Is that good enough? Yes. Okay. All right. Commissioner ZF, you're on. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to open up uh, Wednesday, October 6th public works meeting. We have a number of items to review. First, uh, approval of expenditures. 1A, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for code three in the amount of $3,513.50 for the purchase of emergency equipment for the new EMS Assistant Chief's vehicle see the attached. Uh, are there any questions or comments from members of the board? Uh, none shown. I'll move to, that uh, we call a question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 1B, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Land Mobile Corporation in the amount of $2,520 for the installation of emergency equipment in the new EMS Assistant Chief's vehicle, again, related to that vehicle. Any questions or comments from members yeah. of the board? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. President. So we approved the purchase and now I'll uh, challenge the installation. Uh, just, uh, Ken, just a question for you. Um, is, is this some um, standard equipment that has previously been in the assistant chief's vehicle? No, sir. Um, this is new equipment. Um, the other stuff was 50 or 14 years old, something like that. It was transferred previously to the vehicle and was it wouldn't fit. Um, we went from a Jeep to a Dodge Durango, so it's different equipment. Okay, but serving the same purpose, I guess, is what I was yes, asking. Sir. It's the emergency warning equipment, lights and sirens. Okay, thank you. That's, that's all. Any other questions or comments? So I'll call the question. You want to do that, Mr. President? I've been taking I, away I, your chance. I will so move the uh, the purchase of that, the, the installation of that equipment. All those in favor, say aye. 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 One C, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a change order for Glasgow Inc. in the amount of $10,586.67 for the 2021 milling and paving program. See attached. Any questions or comments on that one? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport, please. I just wasn't sure I understood what was being changed and why. It's a change order. So could you just explain, please? Sure, I'd like to take that. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. So I'm going to fill in for uh, Mike Fleming in his absence anymore. So uh, I choose to fill. Yeah, a few months ago, Mike put in, submitted for a purchase order based on our original measurements of $590,862 and 34 cents. Uh, sometimes, as you've seen in the, the past few years and several years, when you're out there, you make field uh, evaluations and judgments based on what's going on. Uh, one of the streets in particular, we uh, hit ballast stone underneath the blacktop at one and a half inches of milling, which requires you know, skim coating that. Also, we had some high, um, high crowns on the road that we decided to eliminate that weren't necessary. All it does is just force water on the people's properties on the hills and stuff like that. And then to meet the manholes, we went over a little bit where the original PO was. It's really, it's equivalent to almost two truckloads, which really isn't that much. Uh, I've seen them 40,000 and $60,000 in the past years over. But what we're asking for tonight is a adjustment to the original PO and a plus of $10,586.67 to bring a grand total to 601000 Four forty-nine and one cents, and just keep in mind that during this uh, paving program, uh, Pico Energy is uh, giving us a check. It hasn't got it yet, but we will be asking for it. I might already sent a letter for one hundred ten thousand dollars and four hundred seventy-four dollars. That was for the half page that they would have done <clears throat> on the streets uh, like uh, Oak Crest, Chestnut, and Valley. So that's what we're asking for tonight. Any additional questions or comments? Thank you. 
Commissioner Rappaport, are you satisfied with that response? Yeah, I said okay. thank you, sorry. I didn't hear, sorry. Uh, none other being said, so um, call the question. Mr. President, if you'd like to call the roll. All, all those in favor of, of approving this change order say aye. 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 Item 1D, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Everlasting Fence Company in the amount of $4,008.42 for metal fencing materials to secure an open section of the Brookdale flood zone concrete channel in Glenside. Um, Mr. Cole, is there anything you need to add to that request? Uh, I would just like to quick uh, update on what's going on there so everybody knows. Part of our flood project that runs uh, behind the 200 block of Glenside there right by the library, there's been a bridge that's been sitting on our concrete channel for as long as I've been here. The DEP and Army Corps have uh, asked us several times to remove the bridge. The property owners prior did not want to uh, remove the bridge because it's the only access for them to get to their property on the other side of the creek. Just recently in the last year, year and a half, a new resident moved in. They've agreed to side with the township to have the bridge removed. But in order to do that, it is our uh, responsibility to have that protected by a fence because it is our uh, concrete structure of the wall of the flood project. So that's what that amounts for. Uh, we will be removing the bridge ourselves, um, getting rid of the material and putting up all the materials all in the same day to secure it for the safety of all people in that area. Thank you. Any Mr. question? Uh, uh, Commissioner Armand. Yeah, uh, Chris, can you can you give me an idea, a better idea of exactly where that bridge is located and where the fence is going to go? Absolutely. So it's um, if you're familiar with the two houses that were knocked down on Bickley Road, yep, uh, right by the Creek Channel. There, it's it's the second house below that, closest to Waverly, and it Got backs it. up backs up to the library. So if you're standing at the library looking over, you can see that bridge. And the only thing we're replacing is exactly where that bridge will be removed both sides of that culvert there. I understand. Okay, thank you for that. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, so I'll move to question. Mr. All President. Those in, all those in favor say aye. 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 Item 1A, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for signal control products in the amount of $5,350 for two Cobalt C traffic cabinet controllers. Uh, uh, I don't know if we have any questions or comments, or do we need any clarification uh, from potentially Mr. Stucker? I can answer the question if anybody Okay, has. Chris, go ahead. Sure. So um, these are for a controller cabinets. We had an accident uh, a little over a month ago, I think a month, month and a half ago. Car destroyed one of the cabinets at the intersection. We are looking to get that reimbursed eventually, because I believe it is a known accident. Uh, Joe had a second one on spare, which you authorized uh, several months ago about having one so we could just get it up and running right away without having an intersection down for too long. So this is to replace the existing one and to have the spare again uh, for future accidents that happen that Joe can work on his uh, controllers and stuff to make sure everything's running right. Okay, I think that's reasonable considering how many pages of work Joe has every month. Uh, any questions or comments from members of the board? None being there, so I'll call the question, Mr. President. All those in favor of the purchase order for signal control products in the amount of $5,350, say aye. 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 Item two, receipt of monthly report citizen committee meeting minutes. 2A, September 2021 Highway Department report. There's an attachment. Uh, I'd simply say... Um, during storms on August 31st, September 1st, September 7th, September 9th, and September 22nd, the highway department under Bo Coyle have done a tremendous job. So I just want to acknowledge that on behalf of both the board, the staff, and the community that, uh, that you know, great work is continuing to be done. Um, any other questions or comments in, from members of the board? I'm being stated, so I'll move that, those, uh, that that report be accepted. All those in favor say aye. 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 August 2021 Refuse and Recycling Report. I'll move that that be accepted. All those in favor of accepting that report say aye. 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 Item 2C, September 2021 Parks Maintenance Department Report. And I'll simply say, similar to the comments I made for the Highway Department, 
uh, Bob Dominic's group um, has actively been making sure that there's a lot of activity going on to protect the residents and the businesses as we start to, you know, as we experienced a series of five or six weather events in a short time frame. So uh, just an acknowledgement for that department. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? None being shown, call to question, Mr. President. All those in favor of accepting the parks report say aye. 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 Item D, uh, September 2021 20, code administrator report. Um, call to question. All those uh, but before those, you go, uh, before Mr. you go, Mr. Chairman, Mr. if I may, Mr. Commissioner Armand, please interrupt me. Yeah, if I may, thank you. Um, just a just a quick acknowledgement of uh, the work that Al Sergio is doing. In um, I personally have uh, been working with him uh, and various residents in Glenside, and in many respects, he is sort of the face of the township uh, when folks have concerns or issues that need to be addressed, and he really handles it with uh, a lot of poise, a lot of caring, uh, and um, sometimes has to write citations, but um, really does uh, really does do a good job before it gets to that point. So I just want to acknowledge that. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that acknowledgement, and I'll just second it. Besides yes. that, he appears to be a very good golfer. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to echo what Commissioner Armand said. I was just in court with Mr. Sergio and he really is the face of the, uh, the township in certain matters. He's uh, well accepted by the court personnel and by the court itself. It's great, thank you, Mr. Bagley. It's appreciated. I think it's really important that when we have somebody that you know is doing above and beyond that we acknowledge that, so that's terrific. I'll, I'll move for a call to question for the code administrator report. All those in favor of accepting that report say aye. 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 Item 2E, September 2021 street and traffic light superintendent report. So just have to acknowledge uh, Joe Stuckert had a busy month. We've now exceeded his normal full three pages. He almost went to four pages. It's, a, it's just an amazing compendium of how much needs to be done day in and day out for both the street and the traffic lights. So just an acknowledgement that uh, we're very fortunate that we have somebody like Joe day in and day out uh, that's taking care of those things. Any questions or comments from other members of the board? No, Don't Joe, see? he's pretty silent tonight though. He's humble. All, humble. All those in favor of accepting that report say aye. 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 Item uh, F, there was no September meeting of Shade Tree, so we'll pass to item G, which is Environmental Advisory Council. Um, and I, 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 just a comment uh, from their minutes, uh, there's a discussion about the elimination of plastic bags for our township. It's being done or proposed in neighboring township. I think it's an important issue uh, that, that they help us move into that area and to start to reflect on the fact that there's uh, some environmental things that we in fact have within our control. We can't control some of those weather events, but we can certainly control what we contribute uh, to, you know, pollute items that can pollute. So thank you to the uh, EAC for uh, beginning to do that. And I hope we'll move into some more formal activity with their guidance. Uh, any input from other members of the board? That being said, so I'll move that we accept the minutes. All those in favor of accepting the minutes say aye. 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 UH, uh, Lamont Board of uh, Bihar, no meeting. Do I, Wincote Board of Historical and Architectural Review, September 23, 2021 meeting. We have one item, approval of a certificate of appropriateness for application W21-262 of applicants Harry A. and Judith A. Lusk, property owners of One Greenwood Place, Wincote PA, 19015 for the replacement of a deteriorating fence with a new wood fence of slightly different design. Um, whose ward is that? I'm uh, Commissioner Rappaport. Any questions or comments from you? None at all. Uh, I recommend uh, approval. Okay, uh, with that, I'll call the question, Mr. Ch Mr. President. All those in favor of approving the certificate of appropriateness say aye. 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 Move to item three report of the township engineer. I believe I saw Mr. Phillips here. Yes, he is. Right. Yes, I'm here, sir. I I have nothing to report, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have on some ongoing projects. 
Uh, any commissioners have questions? I see Commissioner Armin with that finger up. Go Thank right you. ahead. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Phillips, as, as you may be aware, the, um, the Wawa project at the corner of West Waverly and Easton has posted signs suggesting that the West Waverly uh, road closure may happen any day now. Um, I think it posted, I think the posting says October 4th. So residents are aware of it, um, which is good. And I appreciate the heads up. Uh, but I noticed that the that the construction hasn't happened yet, which is OK. But I was just wondering if you had any insight as to um, when they may be getting started. Uh, I do. I just actually received the, an email from them at about 630 this evening. Uh, PennDOT has approved the, their detour plan. Uh, they will start posting the detour uh, approximately October 11th with an anticipated closure on October 25th. That's their, okay. te their tentative schedule right now. Great, thank you very much. I do have a question, Mr. Phillips. Just wanted to know if there's some, any updates on the uh, evaluation of those 36 stormwater management projects. Have we, you know, moved or progressed in terms of any details or things that, uh, that you'd like to bring to our attention? Uh, sure, we've, we've completed uh, the, the additional site visits that were outstanding the last time we spoke. We've completed them last week, and I intend on having the uh, what I would be considering the final product, but the final product for your review before it's final final uh, sometime next week. Okay, that's and, and great. That'll, and that'll be distributed to everyone. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? Okay, let's move on to item four, the report of the township manager. Mr. Manager, we have two items if you'd like to take those un under your auspices. Sure, a couple items just to prior to, um, I just wanna recognize uh, Bob Coyle. Um, he oversaw the paving program this year to date with inspections and uh, monitoring quantities, uh, how the projects were being done. He did all the estimating prior to all at the same time while he's managing the highway department. I just want to recognize Bo for the nice job that he has done uh, managing the road uh, paving program for 2021. Thank you. Um, also too, would um, like to recognize too, during these storm events, uh, the emergency response between public works, uh, Ken and emergency management, uh, the police department of how all these departments work together and how they coordinate the efforts, uh, even including our volunteer fire departments who have been out there, you know, hosing down a lot of the roads that a lot of the dirt and silt and debris on the roads um, during the middle of the night coming out there so that in the morning, these roads are clear or passable, but I think it shows the tremendous cooperation of departments and the caliber of staff that we do have of coming together uh, in these types of weather events uh, and just being able to see them all work together uh, on the benefit of the, for the township, I think is exceptional. And uh, I think there's no event that we can handle um, uh, regardless of the level of it. We'll respond, we'll be there um, for it. So I just- Mr. Jankowski, before you get into your other items, sure. I'm wondering if, um, if Mr. Hellendahl is on, if he could just take a moment to share with the public, the note that he was we received from Upper Dublin in appreciation of all the effort and work and support that was delivered by uh, Cheltenham personnel, um, police, fire, EMS to support uh, what was a you know a, a really uh, catastrophic event in their municipality. Uh, Ken, are you there? It may not be because it's not public safety, but there, I hope if somebody has a copy of that, it was a really just high praise for uh, the, the dedication to duty and the fact that as neighbors, we recognize when there, when there is a desperate situation in another you know, neighboring municipality that we have an obligation and we expect that if we're in the same situation that there'll be reciprocity. So I think that's, you know, it just reassures each of us that, you know, some of those are volunteers, some of those are folks that are, you know, home trying to rest after a long shift, and they end up having to re-engage and they do so, uh, recognizing that there is a risk uh, for personal safety and whatever, and they do so, you know, 
without any hesitation. So it's uh, it, it's something that I, I think just as we're acknowledging, you know, uh, stuff that's happening, you know, within the township, it's important to know that our folks have a, you know, a highly developed sense of responsibility for helping out regardless of the location or the situation. Okay, on to uh, 4A. Yeah, the two items that we have in front of you tonight, uh, Chris and I wanted to bring to your attention to put on your radar um, some of the items that uh, you know could be uh, very beneficial for the township. So we're not looking for decisions from the board tonight, but the opportunity to present the, this information. So uh, Chris, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, so the first thing, the first thing listed is the GIS mapping and town township stormwater system. Currently, we don't have our stormwater system into the GIS system. So when our guys go out <clears throat> to do the one calls, trying to locate it right now without a camera truck is like next to impossible. You're pretty much using a handheld camera, you know, trying to find a locator, wasting a lot of time out there. You know, we're responsible if somebody hits our line. Long story short, I uh, was talking to a couple of guys when we were doing demos for a factor, trying to get pricing for the capital budget this year, about what kind of services are out there that could do it. Um, one of them is called Bloodhound. Um, th they're known to do this kind of uh, work for townships. You know, I just want to get an idea of what kind of cost would be, uh, you know, what we could do to maybe offset the cost if we were to get our own camera, our own factor truck, things like that. I don't have all the comparisons, but I do have is the numbers right now. Because until I figure out more and talk to these people more in depth, I have some numbers. I think you have it in front of you, but you know, if you look at the one scenario, it shows Cameron scenario number one. Cameron, all the sewer pipes at two thousand two hundred dollars a day. They're guessing it could be two thousand five hundred uh, feet a day if it's not blocked. However, if you need the vector truck, you're looking at another two thousand two hundred dollars a day and says on an as needed basis. And then while you're doing the data collection and mapping also has an additional $2,200 per day. So when you look at that compared to scenario number two, which is just countering the sewer pipes as a per foot at $1 and $10 per foot, then you look down to the next scenarios with everything in there and you see for 165 days, which they believe would be around the guesstimate time uh, it would take to do it at what we uh, proposed, I think, was 80 miles of storm pipe, which technically we really don't even know. But that's a pretty much fair guess based on our sanitary sewer and what we saw on some of the mapping is could we come around $704,000. Uh, looking at scenario number two, doing it the other way with uh, playing per foot, you're looking at $772,640. These are all guesstimated numbers, but again, you know, if we have our own camera truck, can we cut down the cost? Absolutely. Do we have a factor truck? We have one right now. It's on the, it's on its deathbed. It's been on its deathbed for years. You'll see that in the capital uh, presentation, the budget. We budgeted for a new factor. Um, the tanks are beyond rotted. But, you know, it's just a number. You need to see the number. It's a realistic number. Uh, where does the township want to go with it? Should we have our own GI system of our storm server? I think we should especially when we're looking to adopt uh, stormwater fees and stuff like that. I think we'll be able to hone in on uh, every pipe, not just some of the pipes that we know. We'll know everything, all the locations, what we own, what the state owns, what the county owns, things like that. Those are things to consider. And that's pretty much it for this one. Again, it's just something for you to look at, something to absorb, think about going into the budget. Uh, this is a 2021 price. I guess 2022 will be escalated by three to five percent on the average. And again, these are guesstimated uh, days that would be used without not really knowing whether pending circumstances, what could be blocked, not blocked. And this is on top of what Roger and I have already been working on, looking at other things, inspections and things like that, which will eventually will. If we have our own camera, that will help us a lot to do our own inspections as well. Chris, when we looked into the camera and vector purchase. You know, back probably ten months or so ago, my my recollection was somewhere in the four hundred thousand dollar range. Uh, I believe that for uh, for both, you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's definitely around there. Uh, and then, so the question that is associated with that is: uh, within township staff, do we have 
uh, the personnel who in fact could operate that or do we need to have people that are more trained, more skilled in that particular uh, set of tasks? So it's not simply a matter of buying equipment, but it's also adding personnel um, as well as, you know, training existing personnel to be able to operate, you know, a, a different uh, level, a different, you know, degree of technology that we currently have. Yeah. So I think the fair answer is that, yeah, there's a new camera truck. It's different than the last one that trained the guys were trained on. Part of, uh, you know, when you buy something is they give you uh, lots of hours of training. I mean, we did a demo already on a camera truck which is the reason why we brought that pricing to you before. Uh, it seemed very uh, simple. There's hardware out there that can do the GIS mapping. You can install it into it. I mean, when these guys, I mean, we're forced to do the one calls anyway. We're out there. We're going through each one. You know, the, the question is going to be, can they do enough in one year, or does it need to be where you need to shift more personnel into that department where two guys can work every day working on a GIS, GIS system versus you know, doing stormwater repairs, things like that. Th you know, those kind of things I think are going to come down down the road a little bit more once we get into a camera truck and a vector. But yes, I mean, our guys can definitely operate operate a vector truck, no problem. We can do it with our eyes closed. And I think Did you serve that. up a, 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 as far as the preliminary budgets for 2022? Did you make a recommendation or have you laid out both options to us? I've laid out only uh, the cost of the vector and the camera truck together you know part of the discussions where before is if there's money sitting out there in 2021 would the commissioners want to consider paying for something now in 2021 versus having multiple things in 2022 you know they are they are big expenses each one of them the camera truck the factor i mean there's there's no uh no if ands or buts about they're big numbers so you know i said there's money there from the government that they were given to us we cut a check in 2021 to pay for them big items. It's less for next year, but I don't know how that's going to work in the budget process. That's going to be more of a decision for you, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, do any other commissioners have questions? Uh, is that you, Mr. Brockington? It is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, Chris, are you? Are there other townships that are doing it this way, or do they have a, a third party? Who does this? And can we, we need to get a price as to if we want to do a third party to be able to compare it with this. We don't have a comparison yet. Am I right? Well, you're saying a comparison outside this company, like another company would do the same yeah. thing? Yeah. Absolutely. No, absolutely. No, we would definitely have to get another comparison pricing. This is just to get the idea in your mind. Again, okay. as Bob said, we're not asking you to just agree to pay to this. Just the concept of is this something we want to go forward and start looking? Because I really wasn't sure if. You know, the township has had discussions with our uh, engineer at this point and said, hey, we want you guys to start working on this. These are kind of questions that came up. And that's why Bob thought it'd be a great idea to bring it up tonight to you to make sure we're all on the same page and we're all thinking the same thing. Yes. I have are, to get most, it are, sure. are most townships doing it this way? Um, so for a few of the townships I've talked to, a lot of them already have their storm stores into a GIS system. How they got it there? whether they paid for third party or they did it in-house, that's yet to be known. I don't know that okay. information. I will okay. find that out though. All right, thank you, Chris. Yep. Commissioner Rappaport, did I see your hand raised? Yes, thank you. Um, I may be a little confused. Um, Chris, you said that our current truck is on its deathbed. Is that right? Yes. Now, how long would we expect the new back after truck and the new camera to last? I mean, there's a lot of factors. One is, you know, can we keep it inside all the time? And we, we, our old camera truck used to leave it inside. The factory truck, we left it inside as much as possible. Uh, you know, I think the other factory truck, I don't have the paper in front of you. I believe it's like 15 or 17. I mean, that thing has gotten its money's worth and then some. The point is that in the factory truck, the tanks are so rotted from the inside out, you can't patch them no more. And uh, if you recall, I think a few months ago, we asked you, for several thousand dollars to replace the upper motor because that failed. And if we don't have that, we can't respond to emergencies when we're having flooding. I, I don't think I can put a year on it. I would say that, you know, if we're protecting it, keep it in, indoors, uh, at least over uh, overhang where it's not getting weathered like a lot of equipment is right now. It's getting destroyed by the elements. I mean, you know, I don't see any reason why we couldn't keep either one of them 10 plus years, no problem. 
without knowing the unforeseen issues that could come up. Okay, and can you do me a favor and distinguish about, I'd say it was six years ago, five or six years ago, when a new truck came on for, uh, for TVing the sanitary sewers. This was a couple of years before we sold the sewers and we were using it for laterals and for uh, looking in, and that was a brand new truck. I was, I was under the impression that our asset uh, agreement with um, Aqua uh, retained, the, in that agreement, we retained that equipment. Is that um, false? That, that is not true. Uh, um, but what I, what I learned is that, the, that there was never discussion about what we wanted to keep, and that was just added into the agreement to be sold. And I learned okay, that after I learned that after it was already. I, I I don't I don't think that was the case. But okay, thank you. I, I have to agree with Chris. Uh, this is Joe Bagley. I think it was not discussed, and it was part of the agreement. And I think the township tried afterwards yes. to get the truck back and could not get the truck back from Aqua. Right. Yeah. I tr when I started here, I tried to talk to the president of Aqua, and he said it was already in the agreement approved by the state. So couldn't pull it back, which I know, Chris, that was our early conversation, head scratcher, why we'd give away a piece of equipment. Well, we were, we were talking with our attorneys during, uh, you know, bef before the sale was, was consummated. And that, that was not part of what that um, was in there. So I guess it got changed somewhere in between. So, okay, thank you very much. Any other board questions or comments? Mr. Manager, before we go on, I would like to get the details of uh, what's been proposed because I would like to incorporate that into my next round of requests for federal, state, and county money. Uh, and in particular, the stormwater uh, remediation issue is one that uh, two of the three entities are interested in funding. So I'd like to, to add that into the line items or have it as a, as a special requisition request. Sure, we will, we will definitely do that. And again, like Chris mentioned, we wanna be able to bring the board options and not just say, well, here's the item, it's the best way to go, that we'd actually you know, bring you options and have you, you know, make that determination, what you believe is best and you know, how it all works together in the big picture of things. Okay. Excellent point, Mitch, though, to include that. That's like $400,000. Sure. I would have put it in the earlier ones if I knew. <laughs> we have item B. Wait. Oh, was there, is, is there more comment on this, Chris? Uh, Mitch, I just want a clarification. So right now, this is a bloodhound estimate. Would you want me to try at least to get one, if not two? I mean, I've only heard there's only two in the area. Outside, in our area, that actually would do it. If not, they have to come in from other states. So, would be the would you be asking to at least find two, one or one if not two other additional pricing? Just to have an idea of the ballpark sure. you're looking for. Okay, absolutely. Because I think what we want to do is basically provide those that we're asking for, showing them that we've done the necessary due diligence. All we want yep. is a check. Yep, I got you. Okay. Uh, B discussion on municipal lease purchase financing proposal from NCL government capital for a new street sweeper for public works. There's an attachment. So uh, go ahead, Mr. Manager. This is another one we wanted to bring to you. Uh, Chris had brought this to me. I thought it'd be good to get on um, the agenda tonight, at least have the discussion about the need for uh, street sweeping uh, again with our MS4, but as well as um, those individuals who like to decorate our community with paper cups and napkins and garbage and everything else, um, the need for increasing the amount of sweeping that is done in the township uh, is something that uh, I, I believe is needed and especially with our uh, declining equipment too. So Chris, I'll let you take it from here. All right, thank you. Uh, so again, uh, myself and the manager, we had several conversations about the sweeping, what we do, how we do it. And everybody should know by now, we do a minimum of four times a year throughout the township. Every single solitary street is done four times a year. Uh, we're looking for ways to improve it, obviously with parking and things like that, but getting into what we're here for. Um, the, the current sweeper we have is eight years old. 
it's sitting with 48,000 miles, which doesn't really seem like a lot of miles, but it's used hard. Um, you know, it has a lot of body rot right now. The scissor lift system is rusted really bad. Electrical, harnical, uh, electrical harness issues we have are constant. I mean, we were chasing electrical issues on that thing left and right. Um, you know, Bob and I were talking about the difference between one sweeper versus two sweepers. You know, I feel personally we have a need for two sweepers in this township. We have two guys that are pretty much uh, assigned to sweeping duties. Uh, you know, the guys get out the blower, backpack, raking stuff from in their cars, moving stuff while sticks are up there, while the sweeper's coming down, dumping on them, things like that. I think we definitely have room for two sweeping, uh, two sweepers. You'll see that reflected in the uh, capital budget as well. Uh, we did a demo for a sweeper, which is an Elgin sweeper. Uh, I don't, I don't believe, unfortunately, I don't believe I sent a picture of it. Not that it really matters at this point. Again, we're just discussing it, but um, there's an option right now. Again, talking about monies in 2021, if there's an option to consider looking to buy lease a uh, sweeper in 2021. We did a demo uh, about a month and a half ago, trying to look at them, see if it's something we would like. It's comparable to a lot of the townships around what they have for doing the same kind of pro, uh, sweeping programs that we do. They love them. Uh, they're getting a lot of success out of them. A lot less breakdowns than we're getting, not just because they're new, just it's a, a better sweeper. Uh, the current sweeper, which you're seeing right there, there's a uh, cost savings of $26,454. If we were to entertain the thought of maybe purchasing this year, they're holding the line on that number till December. However, that's open to all municipalities right now for as a first come first serve basis. Um, you know, it's smaller it will fit into more compact areas than what we're used to, same size hopper, things like that. You know, spread out over the years, you know, as you see, if you see on there, the lease payments, things like that. Again, it was just something to throw your way uh, it's a demo. It's got 165 hours on it. Uh, it could be delivered within 30 days upon a signature. And again, we're not asking you to sign tonight, but uh, it is CoStars approved. Everything's there. So it's the bottom line number through the state bid, stuff like that. So again, it's a consideration. Uh, I'm presenting for two of them in the capital budget anyway. Talk to Jim Slade. Uh, he has an email, email mail here says, you know, pretty much what I reflected that it's, um, Currently, we have an Elgin Boom Bear that is mounted on a 2013 uh, Freightliner chassis. The chassis has 48,140 miles. Uh, I talked about the deteriorating at a rapid pace without being able to salvage it. I mean, it's not to the point where you can scrub it and pay, uh, paint over it again. It's an all, all, all year round used. I think what hurts us the most is uh, right after the winter time, you get out there and you want to street, uh, sweep the streets up, get all that stuff up, but there's still a lot of residue left, things like that. We do have a um, coated hopper that helps with elimination, but unfortunately you don't have everything in the whole entire sweeper with uh, coating ability and stuff. This new sweeper does have a lot of that, which protects you against a lot of elements, including salt, stuff like that. We would expect a little bit longer out of it, again, without the unknown, but again, it's just something to bring to your attention let you know what we were proposing in uh, the capital and consideration to at least think about it between now and uh, December. There's something we want to look to unleash some monies if there's some there uh, to purchase something now versus wait till 2021 or 22. That would be your option. Chris, do we maintain those or do we have to use an outside resource to maintain those uh, pieces of equipment given that they're so specialized? No, we do it all in house. Our guys do it ourselves. Okay. Mr. Any Chairman? questions or comments on this one? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. President. Um, I, I know we're not discussing whether to go ahead with the purchase of uh, this, this uh, street sweeper tonight, but um, for our budget discussions, I had sent uh, an email and if, uh, if the township manager or if uh, Nathan could work on a couple of questions, um, uh, whether, whether any of our other equipment is leased or whether we've always purchased the equipment. And my leasing question is, has to do with the rates. Um, I calculated what the rates are for the five and seven year leases. And so I'd be interested in finding out what our alternative source of funds would be um, as far as borrowing 
for a five, seven, 10 year options, um, whether, whether, it's, uh, whether it's bonds or, or bank loans or some other type of borrowing, what kind of interest rates they might be offering. So that's for upcoming budget discussion. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? Yeah. Commissioner Holland. Yep, thank you. Um, so Chris, um, any warranty on this equipment? Uh, yes, there is. Um, uh, there is, I still, where is it? There, it does come with a warranty. I'm looking for it. I thought I had it on this paper right here. It definitely comes with a warranty. I believe it was at least a year from what I remember saying. Maybe it's not on this paper I have, it's on an email I have from the gentleman. I can look at one while we're continuing the meeting, but it definitely does come with a warranty, the one that we're looking at right now. Yeah, one, one of the things that I, that I would recommend is, you know, as we get into budget season and we're looking at significant capital expenditures, if we can't um, get any movement, you know, from a, on the cost of the equipment to see if we could get the vendor to supply an extended warranty to try to, you know, minimize our um, back end costs, our maintenance costs of, of the equipment. So just something to think about as we, as we move into October. Sure. I'll definitely ask him that too. In the meantime, Chris, would you be deluged with calls about the, the expiring warranty once, once it went past the year? Well, of course <laughs> I'll, I'll make calls and see if that's even a possibility to do something like that extension of the warranty. We, we were not for that. Uh, I don't think we need to take action, Mr. Manager. Do you have any other no. additional issues? Um, one final issue is uh, we've made a number of the facilities presentations. I know at Commissioner Brockington's meeting, uh, town hall meeting on Monday night, we did. Uh, just to let residents know, and I think this dovetails back on you know conversations of the money we've submitted so far to the state for facilities. Um, I'd encourage everyone, if they could, our residents, um, to write to our state representatives and encourage them to support the township's request uh, for millions of dollars to help with our facilities. Um, it, it definitely makes a huge difference uh, hearing from our residents uh, for support of the uh, submissions that we've made uh, for significant dollars. And uh, again, that a large uh, tip of the hat goes to Commissioner Zygmuntfeld of the time he's put in to prepare these detailed um, requests to the state. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And that's um, all I have. Okay, I'll move to item 5-0 business. Uh, I, I, an oldie, but a continuing goodie. Uh, item 8, discussion on proposed stormwater management fee. And, and before we get into, we have Mr. Uh, Tony Dill from Mercatus, but before we do that, um, we've, we made our August presentation. There have been, uh, a, there's been a great deal of continuing public comment over the last month. And uh, while many of you may not, you know, see things day in and day out, we are paying close attention to all the comments, to all the concerns that are being expressed. And I think tonight what you'll see is, that we've recognized the need uh, to, to uh, be flexible and adjust in order to, to control the fees and make sure that what we're doing aligns with both you know, our needs and the pocketbooks of our residents who are be responsible for those fees. So um, I'll ask, uh, unless anybody wants to intervene, if Mr. Dill would uh, you know, provide, with, uh, provide the, us and the public with the latest update, I assume you can give them control of the screen. Is that you, Allison, in charge tonight? There you go. Thank you. Tony, it's yours. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mitch. Can you see the slide this yes. time? Okay. So yeah, there's been a few changes uh, lately in the stormwater fee. Um, based on some feedback and information uh, you know, I've received from folks at the, at the township there. And <clears throat> this slide highlights the changes that have been made since the last uh, presentation on the stormwater fee. Um, one item is we're looking to phase the, the fee in over three years. So rather than set a rate right at the beginning that covers the full uh, level of service goals for the, uh, the stormwater program, uh, phase that in. Uh, we've recently uh, 
taken a closer look at the condo communities in Cheltenham, and there's there's two main types. There's sort of the townhouse uh, type condos that are spread out with more private roads, and then there's the high rise uh, condos, and they really look very similar to what you would think like an apartment building. Apartment buildings were already considered, you know, uh, commercial for the purposes of billing, measure the total impervious area on those. And we've uh, moved the high rise co uh, condos into the same uh, category and, me and measure those impervious surfaces and treat them as commercial rather than single family residential parcels. <clears throat> the ERU calculation, that's the equivalent residential unit or the average amount of square feet per residential parcel was uh, adjusted based on that uh, move of how we treated the high rise condos. So that num new value is 3,593 square feet. I think it was 3,508 before, so a, a slight change to that. We recalculated the total number of equivalent yet residential units, or those are the billing units within the township um, for both residential and the non-residential multifamily categories. Again, as you adjust that ERU value and, and, and adjust those condos, it makes some slight changes to those quantities. And then finally, as we made those changes, we looked and made some tweaks to what the general fund contribution would need to be over the first couple of years as we're phasing in this, the stormwater fee. So, so this slide just shows the, the three tier rate structure that the uh, township has uh, preliminarily uh, identified as its preferred rate structure and showing that uh, those parcels that are less than a 10th an acre would, would um, have a half an ERU charge. Those that are between a half, I mean, one tenth to a half acre would be uh, one ERU and then those greater than a half acre would receive the two ERUs. The, uh, townhouse type condos would be included in that middle tier. Um, this results in 9,227 net ERUs. That's after we account for what's assumed to be a 5% loss due to a credit policy that's in draft form and hasn't been you know, uh, published at this point, but we're, we're working on that uh, as we move forward. On the commercial side, uh, the, the like I said, the, the numbers were recalculated here and we have uh, 695 parcels. That's a little over 7,000 gross ERUs. And if we assume that we lose 10% of those to a credit program, uh, that's for you know on-site stormwater controls and things that these properties may have, that would result in 6,406 net ERUs that are generating revenue. And the graphic just shows the uh, commercial property owners with the largest uh, number of uh, ERUs in the township. The and Tony, since we made the original presentation, the adjustment here is that we've eliminated uh, uh, the, the ERU obligations on the school district properties. Correct, right. Um, yep. Any, any other questions? Okay. Um, so then, you know, lastly, this is just sort of what it boils down to on the uh, rate structure, looking at $80 in the first year, going up to 160 and then 220. And then in the two years following that, showing just an inflationary adjustment of 3% a year, which would, you know, most likely continue in, into the future, uh, unless we <clears throat> have no inflation in the future. Uh, the Bottom line is that when we look at the, the rates times the number of used ERUs, it generates a certain amount of revenue because we're phasing that rate in over a few years, the first couple of years to make the, the to balance the budget, if you will, there we're looking at a general fund contribution around 1.8 million, and then 900,000, and then by the third year going to zero. Now, of course, if all of the en enhanced level of service goals are not uh, advanced in the first year, to the extent some of them aren't, it would relieve uh, some of that pressure on the general fund in that first uh, year or two. So it kind of depends on how quickly the program does ramp up uh, into where the targets are. And Tony, all the operational costs associated with uh, operations and maintenance are incorporated in these numbers, correct? We've removed them uh, as, a, as a separate, you know, or as a, as a bundled line item and they are dedicated just to the stormwater management uh, fee uh, and how you know that is an pretty much is an enterprise unit is going to run. Right, that total expenses line item uh, uh, 
about two thirds of the way down. That's three million uh, in the first year, three million forty three, and then it goes up each year. That includes the operation and maintenance expenses, in addition to about eight hundred thousand dollars a year uh, for capital contributions to either finance new capital projects or uh, to, to either fund them directly or finance them again uh, through some type of borrowing and then paying the debt service on that. Right, and to the to the folks that are viewing, um, as the township. It has submitted requests to federal, state, and will submit to county. Uh, stormwater management is one of the areas, and flood remediation is one of the areas that there may be funding available. And if that funding becomes available, that would be put against you know the capital requirements that we've incorporated to, to uh, Tony's point, the $800,000. We would obviously use those dollars, dedicated dollars, to reduce our capital Commitment, so that would obviously take down uh, the annual stormwater fees if, if in fact, we're able to secure those dollars uh, from federal, state, and county uh, entities. So I think it's important to know that these are not necessarily fixed in stone, but we have to proceed as if we're moving on our own without any uh, incremental funding from those sources. But we are optimistic, and we've been given some reason to believe um, that we've made a compelling case. And now we're competing with uh, tens of thousands of uh, townships and uh, a couple thousand state municipalities to try and, and grab hold of those funds. So, so that is, that's what I had to, to, yeah. to Commissioner offer Pransky, tonight. I think has a question, okay. Commissioner. Can I do mute? Yeah. Um, a couple of questions. First of all, uh, Tony mentioned about the uh, credits where we might lose a certain percentage for stormwater remediation. Um, how are we testing for the effectiveness of those who apply for a credit and say they've done such and such a thing? How do we measure against capacity otherwise? Well, to receive a credit, somebody has to submit a credit application that has to be reviewed that indicates that their 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 best management practice or stormwater control you know is is in compliance with the you know like the, the Pennsylvania best management practices manual or guidance so there's some um, standard to which it needs to have been uh, constructed and then it needs to be maintained there needs to be you know a, 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 an indication that these are being inspected on a periodically and, and maintained in the future typically we don't actually go out and do field measurements if you will of you know, infiltration rates and things like that to confirm. It's really based on um, if they were uh, implemented in accordance with the standards. All right, as far as the inspections, who handles that? Well, it, it, it can vary. Um, in, in some communities um, that they're, uh, I've seen credit programs where they require a third party to, to do inspections. I've seen uh, in one community, they, they train in, you know, they offer training to people to do self-inspections that, that gets, I guess, spot checked. Others that the township can go out about and do those inspections. Typically, we require an inspection form to come in, whether it's uh, self-certified or, or required a third party, and then the, the the municipality would, you know, spot check. You know, these not not necessarily go to every one every year. But, I, you know, I understand, but yeah. considering the breadth of the problem we have here in the township, I would feel much more comfortable if there was an inspection program in place that was in fact paid for and accounted for in our costs. If we find after the first couple of years that we can reduce that to something less tedious for everybody, terrific. But a lot of people are going to be wanting to clamor for some sort of credit, especially larger places. And I want to make sure that those places in particular are held to the appropriate standard. Okay. Um, and Mr. Zygmuntfeld, this is, this is probably for you. You mentioned that you took the school districts out of the equation. Um, to anybody's knowledge, it's a toss up question. Was there any stormwater management planning by the school district for any of the new buildings they put up in the last couple of years? Absolutely. Yes, there was quite a bit. Okay. I didn't know However, if you ever submitted uh, Just a reality check. Uh, Cedar Brook, the new construction, has had a number of flooding events. Uh, it, it, with some of the recent storms that occurred. So there's some questions about the effectiveness of the um, point. basins and things that were supposedly incorporated 
to mitigate those issues. So that, that is actually referring to what I was questioning because Correct. just to so, say you get a pass, but yet there's still major contributors to flooding. I, I don't think it is a way to resolve the issue about the amount of asphalt that the school district has in this township. Because one way or the other, the taxpayers pay for it. And if it's going to be out of a, a, a budget, I'd rather it was the school districts if it's their flooding problem. Your uh, comment is noted and uh, it's something that we, uh, the adjustment was made in this interim period uh, based on input and discussions. And I think one of the things that we need to do now, uh, particularly if we're going to uh, eliminate that obligation is to also impose expectations on both the township and on the school district to make sure that whatever subsequent efforts are being done um, that those, uh, uh, you know, the basins, the remediation efforts are all incorporated in every uh, particular building improvement that we do, any exterior improvement, any, um, anything that we are looking at uh, authorizing has to have something that, that uh, takes into account the MS4 and some of the things that are going to impact us as we start to try and manage those manageable events that in fact uh, right now, we're, we still have problems in trying to handle. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Commissioner Holland first, and then you, Commissioner Rappaport. Uh, I, I'll, I'll actually defer to Commissioner Rappaport and uh, go second. Okay. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, the questions that you're raising about the effectiveness might also go uh, back to our engineer, uh, and we might as a township want to pursue uh, more stringent uh, stormwater uh, requirements in our, um, in our codes, because uh, when, uh, when it happens that sometimes uh, the minimum standards are adhered to and they don't, um, they're not effective necessarily against the kinds of changing storms and the amount of flood water that we're getting, uh, it suggests that maybe our minimum standards are not high enough, not tight enough. So for another time, but I think that uh, um, all, all signs are pointing to this is not going to get better uh, with the kinds of storms and climate change that we're confronting. Commissioner Allen. Yep, thank, thank you. Um, question on the general fund contribution in the first year of 2022, um, the 1.8, um, what I'll call a deficit from the revenue that was collected. Where, where does that come? Where is that coming from? So, so my understanding when we, when we pulled this together that the, the township was spending um, close to 1.7 million in stormwater costs already. Um, and a lot of those, it, it, that, uh, and the majority of those being rolled into this uh, expenses line item here. So that money that was going into paying for some of those things would, would be redirected, I guess, to the stormwater uh, program, um, if you will, directly. So there, but there, be, there may be a slight gap in, in that, and and that would either have to be uh, funds identified or some of those improved level of service, you know, increase inspection rates of inlets or increase cleaning or more pipe repairs, um, get deferred a little bit a year, so we don't do quite as much. We don't spend the full three million forty three thousand, if you will, you know, in the first year. Got it. So so I just want to try to clarify. Um, in a very simple sort of way so that I understand. So in 2022, you know, we're basically already spending $1.8 million a year on, on these sewer related issues. And we're just moving that into the stormwater budget in 2022. Correct. And then adding the revenue that we're collecting at the $80 per ERU. Is that accurate? Right, right, yes. And then, and then in 2023, 
we're increasing that ERU rate to 160 per ERU, and we're reducing what that contribution, what we normally spend in the operating budget to 900,000, and we're increasing the stormwater fee in 2023. And then in 2024, it's all stormwater fee and sort of zero from, you know, sort of the old way we were doing it from the operating budget. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify for myself and for any others that, that may uh, have questions. Thank you. Commissioner Brockington, I see your hand up. Yes, I do. I wanted to talk to Tony. Tony, I don't know if um, our township manager shared an email with you from uh, one of our residents who has a larger lot. And I don't know if this is the forum that you're, you're ready to talk about some of the questions that he had. Uh, Commissioner Brockington, I, what I'd like to do is defer a specific question. If we have global questions yes. that are going to reflect on, um, on uh, how we're going to modify policy, but an individual question at this point should be handled separately. All right. Well, I just wanted to make sure that Tony, you did get that. And I'm sure Bob just sent it to you. Yes. And I, I would like for you to either follow up with me or with that particular residence on, on his concerns. Understood. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the board? Okay. Um, I don't think we're, we're doing an approval here. I think what we wanted to do was take this and then uh, it's our intention to bring the, these changes and some of the discussion to another meeting with the stormwater advisory group. I don't know whether that's an Allison you might be on. Uh, do we have anything scheduled at this point? Uh, no, not at this point. Okay, well, let's, I think what we need to do in the next day or two is uh, do an outreach and see if we can set this up because this is an adjustment and we would like that the feedback from the, the folks who have been involved in this process for the last uh, 14 months. So I think it's important we do that. Um, uh, so I think we should move on to, to are there, is there any other old business from members of the board? None being said, we'll move to item six, new business. Uh, a, review of contract with Montgomery County for snow and ice removal on Eastern Road for the winter seasons of 2021-22, 2022-2023, 2023-2024. 2023, there is an attachment. Um, can we get some clarity on this one? Is that you, Chris? Uh, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, yes. Uh, so... I'll jump back. The last uh, three-year contract for 18, 19, 18, 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21, uh, we actually got $9,860 versus, versus what the county is offering now at $8,649.60, which is a reduction of $1,210.40. Okay. I reached out to... Uh, the contact that Mike used last, her name was Greta Riley. I haven't heard back from her yet, so I did go ahead and call a couple of my um, co-partners in other townships and asked if they've heard anything. They've spoken to somebody else, not Greta, but another person who they dealt with, and the county felt that they overpaid us over the last three years. Even though we have a discrepancy with that, I don't feel that, that that's the case. If you were to look at every, uh, every can we put that resident on mute, please? Six, nine, four, four. Bertha, you keep calling me, and I'm on. I'm not on mute. Uh, Allison, can you put Miss Keaton on mute, please? Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Chris. So, I talked to a couple of other townships, and we both, you know, we both agree that, you know. It's not a, a large reduction, but there's a question. You know, the question is, you know, where are they coming out with these numbers at per lane mile? What, what's their, what's the graphing behind it? What's the proof behind how they came up with the number to reduce it? And I guess the biggest thing is what I, what I at least wanted to propose was to the county was, well, once I see the graphing, which I haven't seen yet, is how do we go over it? How do we figure out that we're spending more than that? 
is there a way to, for us to submit something like a supplemental uh, form for asking for funding from them more at that time? We haven't gotten that answer. So, you know, could we push this off till November? I think we could, <laughs> pending that we get more answers from the county. You know, it's one thousand two hundred ten dollars or forty cents. The other townships around here, it's around, it's exactly the same thing. It's just a little bit less money, but you know, we all want to know. Like, can we uh, ask for more if we go over? You know, so that that's pretty much how I feel about it. I don't think that. I, I don't know. I just don't think unless they can prove to me in writing why they felt they overpaid us and then we can come back with saying, well, guess what? Our wages are this, uh, you know, we use this many tons per lane mile. Plus the fact that salt went up this year, you know, salt went from $51 to $58 this year. So that's a $7 increase. You know, is that factored into what they're, they figured out that's yet to be seen. So in my opinion, you know, it snows in November. We're gonna, we're still gonna do Eastern Road no matter what. We can always talk to the county, figure it out. I don't think we should be voting on this price right now, just for the fact that I haven't gotten enough information to look at it and come to you and say, hey, I agree with it based on what they're saying. It's, it's just too hard. I, I can't do it, even though it's a smaller number. It's it's twelve hundred dollars and forty cents we could use something on, on something else you know chris do they do they build in you know the the prognostication from from the weather forecast so that you know everything that we've seen has been that there's going to be a much more severe winter this year and heavier snow so uh, for them to say you know to just put a stake in the ground and say oh. we're giving you less money this year it doesn't reflect reality yeah, well, I, I think part, like the answer of we feel you we ever paid you in the last three years. I mean, what's the proof? Show us. I mean, give us something to look at. You know. Okay. Do I see your hand uh, up, Commissioner Rappaport? You do. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I also had noticed in the contract, or at least I didn't notice in the contract, any increase over the three years for inflation, for contracts, for gas or, you know, fuel, as well as for the salt, I was going to mention. Labor. So, yeah, I mean, our labor, our labor contracts, right. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems to me that it's way off base uh, in terms of a flat fee for the three years, as well as a reduction. And also in the contract, I noticed, it, again, like many of the PennDOT uh, contracts, it's one-sided. You know, we hold the county harmless. Uh, and, uh, you know, all the language is in the county's benefit. There's nothing mutual about it. Um, and I don't understand that. So I wonder also uh, if uh, Mr. Poole's <clears throat> department could benefit from the use of uh, our attorney intervening as well, or perhaps uh, other elected officials intervening on our behalf. Mr. Bagley, I see you, you jumped in here. I had a question myself along the lines of uh, we're in control of the means for accomplishing this. Uh, we indemnify them because we're in control of the means, but they're the ones who make the, to render the decision as to whether we've adequately done a, you know, the job or not without any reference to any standard. So I, I do agree that it's very one side, it's written on a very one-sided basis. And there should be a few things punched into it to, to make it a little bit more mutual. Uh, does this merit, you know, a meeting with the county, you know, road folks, you know, and highway folks in order to, to get some clarity here before we're, we're in a position to actually even uh, consider the contract? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly where we're at right now. Like I said, we're not the only township. There's several of the surrounding townships are asking the same questions, looking for a breakdown of how they came out with it. And the only answer they have is they felt, at least verbally what I've heard, as uh, they felt they overpaid us and they're following the guidelines of PennDOT, but not showing the breakdown of how they get to that. Okay. So I, I, I'm, I'm, having, I'm struggling with it. Why don't you make a motion, somebody make a motion to table it. And that in and of itself may send a message to the county. So moved. Uh, I'd add to the motion that 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 we're asking the staff to go back to the county for an explanation 
as to uh, their justification for these numbers, as well as uh, review by our solicitor of the contract to in, in view some mutuality there. I'll second that one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, item 6B, Mr. Kluwer, you have the floor for the presentation of Deer Management Program. Yeah, you, mi you missed a few. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm just going to back up just a little bit for everybody in case, you know, there's anybody on here tonight that's new to this, hearing it, opposed to it, whatever. Um, back in uh, 2016, the township. I brought this proposal to the township based on deer versus auto accidents and a lot of residential complaints. Being that I was uh, have some history in hunting, uh, done deer management at other townships before, nurseries, um, farms, kids kids camps, things like that. I thought it'd be a good idea to bring it to the township manager. He said bring it to the commissioners. Uh, you know, the way it's seen by some people is uh, a bad thing. If you look at the statistics, what I, what I could share a lot of them tonight, which I'm going to, it does show that deer management is effective. The goal of the program is definitely not to wipe out the entire deer herd. It's just to bring it down to a safer level, you know, set management goals, you know, um, you know, you're making good harvest decisions when we're out there. We're monitoring the herd while we're going on to the best of our ability without doing infrared flyovers with helicopters, which some townships has it elected to do, which is very expensive to do. It's in the range of twenty, thirty thousand dollars for a one-night fly to get some imagery of uh, deer. It's not something I don't think we need to do, based on uh, the last five years' statistics. But getting into it, um, so in 2016, uh, the archers took 32 deer. In 2017, the archers took 45 deer. 2018, the archers took 50 deer. 2019, the archers took 41 deer. 2020, the archers took 52 deer, which still, I'm still shocked at that number. Uh, coming at a total of 220 deer in the five year uh, time. In 2015, 2016, that's when we first had our studies of the auto versus deer. I was working with the police department, getting their numbers versus what we had. This is only what was reported, not the ones that, you know, die off in the woods go off injured and suffer in the woods from a car accident. We were at 62. The following year, we uh, were only hunting for three years, or I'm sorry, we only hunting for three months of the year, and the numbers were at 58, which really wasn't a dramatic uh, sign of anything. The following year, 2017, 2018, those numbers went down to 19. That was a dramatic re reduction. Uh, 2018, 2019, numbers dropped down to 23. Uh, auto auto accidents versus uh, deer, 2019, 2020, we were down to 24. Uh, that's, you know, 36, overall is 36 deer less per year. Uh, out of the number of 220 deer, 142 deer were donated to a hunter share in the harvest, local needy families, food banks. And again, this year I've got quite a few uh, residents that I've asked for deer, they said that they're uh, disabled, uh, not getting money anymore, hungry, things like that. I've talked to a couple of residents recently that are also preparing food bags to share with them. They're very receptive to uh, having venison on the table. It's better than nothing. And it's not just in Cheltenham, it's other places that we have these uh, lists. I provide these lists that are very confidential to myself and the residents, just so everybody knows. I don't let the names go out there. However, I will pick up food and drop them off uh, to these houses. And again, this year we've had three in the last two weeks in Cheltenham Township. Um, so last year in Ashburn Meadows, that was the first year we ever hunted there. We took out 14 deer, 10 in Parkview, which is right there at the Ashburn Meadows. A lot of it has to do with the development was there. Plus it's just a big uh, wooded parcel. The township took ownership of uh, 36, I believe 36.12 acres, uh, totaling 46.91 acres if you add the other acres across the creek, the border of Tookany Creek Parkway. I'm looking to propose that again this year, just because of the, um, the construction. 
obviously if the houses are built, there's the walking trails are in, we see it could be a safety issue, we back out, it's, it's not even, it's an easy decision. I can make that call on the spot. I don't even need anybody to tell me to do that. We know what we're doing. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll pull out, the stands will be out, everything else. Safety's first, it's always number number one. If you look at the track record for having the year managed the last five years, there has not been one incident that I know of on record in the police report where it's a negative thing other than somebody just not liking the hunting concept itself. So Ashmore Meadows is proposed this year, 49 uh, 46.91 acres. Third year proposal will be Glenwood Open Space, uh, which we're having a lot of uh, a lot of residents are there looking forward to that again. Even though it's a small, small parcel, there is a lot of deer holding over there. And it abuts the Jewish Federation Open Space, which they are on board also to uh, help with the deer management, which is a great thing. Uh, Gimmel Field, fourth year proposed, Gimmel Field and uh, Island of Chelton Hills. And again, Gimmel Field, if that bridge ever goes in, the walking trail behind the 2-2 church, uh, that's an easy call. We just pull out of there, it's a safety issue. But right now, we're still seeing deer in there holding, and so are the residents in that area. So that's definitely being proposed at 15.5 acres, even though it's not huntable, the whole 15.5 acres you'll see on the maps exactly where we would be hunting. Uh, the next one's the island of Chelton Hills. Uh, I sort of have been on and off on that one over the years, but recently uh, this year, I've seen a lot of deer crossing uh, Chelton Hills Drive, a lot of close encounters and a few uh, deer getting hit by cars there. So that's proposed again, the 6.71 acres is across the creek. It's not where really anybody goes other than the bikers have a little ramp over there, which uh, they've been respecting uh, the signage that we put up when we're in there, which is a good thing. Park views on there again. Um, I know this hits home to a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, people that dispute the hunting there in that area, but there's a lot of people that also uh, respect the hunting that's going on in there. Uh, you know, the numbers talk for themselves. So I think we're over 30, uh, if not 35 in that area of Parkview itself in the last couple of years where some people thought there was only five deer in there that ever lived there before. I'm gonna talk about the transient deer and the residential deer when I get to the end of this. Rock Creek open space. Uh, this is uh, 17 acres of township property at uh, Butts Spring Avenue and Rock Lane. And again, it's only the one side of the walking trail behind the Homes Office Park. And to, to date, again, every one of those residents, I've never had an issue over there other than the first year. They were just worried we would be on their side of the trail. There's hundreds of people that uh, walk that trail per year. During the fall season, we've actually seen people walk right by us you know, within 60 yards and they sort of wave to us and know we're in there. Signs are put up everywhere. It's safe. You don't have to worry about your dogs, your cats, your children, if they run out the door. It, we know the difference. We're not hunting in dark conditions. It's bright light. We know what we're doing. These guys are professionals that want to do it. They have years experience. Uh, open space at Wingate Ross. Uh, you know, that's another one. If it goes under contract to sell, it's very easy to pull out of there. Uh, the, the deer herd over there is still big. I don't know if Wingate lets people on their own property, but we do own 6.71 acres over there. I'm definitely suggesting that they're in there. It's a nasty, uh, thick area with a lot of trash and everything else that we you know, need to work on ourselves. But uh, there's a lot of deer in there and they uh, go into the Green Valley open space, which is coming up. So the Waverly Road compost facilities, 8.20 uh, acres. Again, obviously we can't hunt the compost facility itself but there, are, there is a track of land on the power line, which uh, recently you may have seen an email. And I found uh, somebody illegally hunting on township property last, last week, found the tree stand. I actually did uh, find the owner of the tree stand. He was uh, honest, called, said he got bad information from a game warden that said that he could hunt power lines, it was legal. Even though the power line is clearly posted that it's uh, no trespassing, things like that. So, you know, some of, the, some of the good things about uh, having people that you have dedicated to be in there, they're watching your uh, property, letting you know who's coming in, who's doing things that are wrong. This isn't the first hunter we've caught. We've caught a couple of them, and uh, we've dealt with them as, as, as needed. Most of them have been respectful and retreated and left the property with no incident. Green Valley uh, Road open space. This was actually a topic last night at uh, a wind coat. Um, town hall meeting, which Baron Holland, Commissioner Holland attended, Township Manager attended, 
one of the first things out of their mouth was, is we, are we coming back in to take care of the deer? Uh, I know years ago when we came in there in the first year, we took out 26 does out of uh, the back wood lot there, which was a major impact. Uh, we laid off there a little bit. We still hunted it, but we didn't go there as hard because people weren't seeing the numbers. You know, we tried to utilize our time to do what we can. These guys, uh, the guys and girls that hunt, uh, they have full-time jobs. They do this when they can. Um, you know, we don't want to waste our time. But again, hearing that the complaints are coming from that neighborhood, I promise them I will at least uh, put it up for your vote tonight. I think it's uh, going to be a good thing. We have a lot of residents in that neighborhood that have also offered their own properties uh, to hunt as well. And we recommend that if anybody that has a property that's huntable, call me. If you don't know if it's huntable or not, call me. I'll let you know if it is or not by law. Uh, you might have to ask permission from your, uh, your, your neighbors. I did want to talk real quick about residential deer versus transient deer. This is very important. Uh, residential deer are deer that live in a neighborhood and stay in that neighborhood their whole life pretty much. Uh, that's very common in this township. Uh, the transient deer we have are more Wavy Road compost facility and down Parkview and Ashbourne Meadows are coming from the Fairmont Park. They're coming from Springfield, Chestnut Hill area. They follow the power lines. They follow the creeks. If you look at these uh, maps I put out, everything has a creek near it pretty much, which pretty much tells you how the deer travel, right? So the sources are food, water, uh, high dense areas, which these all are. A lot of People don't use these areas. Very, very often do we not see people in here, even if the signs are there. That we just, I just don't see them there on a normal basis. Um, so that's why we propose these areas again. We haven't really had too many complaints about closing these areas off for that long period of time. And again, if things change with walking trails, and safety issues, we can adjust as we go. I don't see any issues with safety moving forward. I think it's a great thing. It's really in your hands whether you decide you want to do it and continue on. I think it's for the benefit of the township, the residents to reduce the tick population, Lyme disease, auto accidents, and just overall quality wood, you know, woodland life for the birds, animals, all those. There's more food for them too by reducing the numbers. It's unfortunate, again, that some people don't uh, see it the way I do it. I was raised that way. And uh, I see a good perks in it by all the years I've been doing. I've been doing it for 30 years. I've been doing deer management. It's very effective and it's worked in other townships and other places. So that's what I have to say tonight. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to ask. Are there any Thank questions from members of the board? I'm, I'll Go move ahead. the adoption of the program. With thanks. With lots of thanks, Chris. I'll move the adoption of the program as designated by Chris with the properties that are in the agenda. All Second. those in favor, say aye. 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 Commissioner, can I just say one thing I forgot, please? Yes. That's what was important for the residents. Two things. One, that program is completely free to the township. It doesn't cost the taxpayers a dime. And two, every archer on there is insured, as well as the township, which the township will receive a certificate of insurance. Once this is approved tonight, the township manager will have it. Signs will be posted in all these areas before any hunting take place. I just want to make sure that was put out. Thank you. It's a great program, Chris. Thank you. And thanks for the detail, Chris. Uh, from anybody, is there any other new business item that anybody wants to bring up? I'm not seeing any, so we'll move to uh, item seven, Citizens Forum. Allison, you're in charge. Any citizens want to make any comments for Public Works this evening? Anyone wants to make comments, you can raise your hand and we'll let you talk. I'll move to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.